Hey, Steve Mignon here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with another High Octane Walk Around. This is a 1967 Mustang 2 Plus 2 sports roof fastback, call it what you will. We have to remember, of course, the Mustang fastback didn't arrive until the model year 1965. Meanwhile, the convertible and the sedan Mustangs arrived halfway through 64, but believe it or not, the fastback, the two plus two, the sports roof, was the last of the breed to arrive. Well, by 1967, the fastback was selling in pretty solid numbers, and it grew up, literally, mostly between the fenders. We'll talk about that in a second. But getting back to the fastback roof on this, it speaks for itself. What a graceful design this is. And again, fastback styling kind of got a revival in the 1960s. The Charger, uh, 66 and 7, the Marlin, big full-size Chevys, Mustang, Barracuda, all had a fastback. Now, it's a beautiful thing to look at, but the only downside to a fastback, if you're in it, the blind spot looking over your shoulder, merging. You don't see through the B-pillar too well. So fastbacks, not great for daily driving, but a lot of people got around that because they're beautiful to look at. Another thing about fastbacks that is a double-edged sword is the fact that the rear window extends well into the trunk. So in the case of these, the trunk is, the opening is shorter and smaller, whereas on a convertible or a sedan, be about twice as big, big old trunk. On this one here, it's a smaller slot. But the good news is, when it's open, let's take a peek in here, we can actually utilize the load floor to carry um, a sheet of plywood. And frankly, that's one of the hidden benefits of a fast back. Open this up right here. There's a little doorway that comes down here, and then you can put things through it. But again, speaking of this trunk compartment, it's enough here to put your groceries in or you know, a couple of days of travel, a few suitcases. So it's not as bad as it might look. But again, the story on the 67 Mustang is also under the hood. Let's take a peek there. Now, before we open the hood, we'll notice, of course, the styling of the 67 Mustang outside kind of was an evolution of 66 and 65 and 64 and a half in terms of the sunken grille, the running horse in its corral, even the shape of the front bumper was very similar. I mean, why mess with a good thing? But under the hood is where things really got different for 1967 for Mustang in the form of this. This is the 390 cubic inch big block V8. Now for 1966 and before, the 289, 101 cubic inches smaller, was the biggest V8 you could get. Now the whole thing is, the previous generation Mustang, 64 and a half through 66, was based on the Ford Falcon compact car. You couldn't get a 390 in the engine bay of a Falcon. It just wouldn't fit. So for 67, Ford actually used the Ford Fairlane mid-size platform under the Mustang skin, which did have a wide enough engine bay to accommodate extra size big blocks like this 390. And in fact, in 1968, the 428 became optional in the Mustang. So again, 1967 Mustang from the outside looks a little bigger, but under the hood, it's a lot bigger. And it's all about moving the shock towers farther apart to fit this 390 engine. Back in 66, it would have been about like that. This engine would not have begun to fit. Now, this engine here is the first year for the 390. It's got the four barrel, 325 horsepower in Mustang, hydraulic cam, the chrome air cleaner lid, and valve covers are factory items. And you might say, where is the breather? Where is the snorkel on this air cleaner? Well, on these Mustangs particularly, there's an opening here with a grate on both sides of the air cleaner. What a cool touch that is. Basically, it's an unsilenced air cleaner, in a sense. And beyond that, the snorkel really wouldn't fit underneath the hood of a Mustang. And that's uh, one of the beauties of the Mustang 390 GT engine, not used in other Fords, with that unsilenced air cleaner and factory chrome valve covers. This one has been upgraded a little bit with an aftermarket air conditioner, no harm there. Uh, aluminum radiator, which looks like the factory piece, but actually does a much better job of cooling this big 390. Now, one thing about each one of these videos is at the end of the video, we're going to fire the engine up, we're going to rev it, you're going to get to here, but you have to stick around to the end. Believe me, it's worth it. Okay, now we go inside this Mustang to see what's been upgraded there, too, for 67. Inside, like all Mustangs, 
The shifter is always on the floor. Ford never had a column shifted Mustang, which is cool. It kept with the sporty theme of the car, including the bucket seats. You could get a splint bench if you wanted in your Mustang, but this one has the typical bench or bucket seat you'd like to see. But best of all here, a four-speed manual transmission. And the beauty here is that uh, four on the floor was one of those muscle car things that connected you to the, the car like no automatic ever could. Has the Hurst shifter linkage. And again, under the floor is a thing called the Ford Top Low motor four-speed, which was a heavier version uh, of the T10, which was a lighter duty transmission. And when you had that 390 on the other side of the firewall, you didn't want a T10, you wanted the top loader. And Ford knew that. That's why they went to the top loader four-speed with the 390. Uh, this one here is just beautiful inside the, the 67 specific padded dash right here as car makers started to get more aware to the safety aspect and occupant safety and right here the horn button on 67 up is this large pad right here believe it or not that is considered a safety item right there your forehead would hit that rather than a steel knob and that's a good thing it was a step in the right direction but here in the back of course we see the two plus two strength or weakness, you call it, is the narrow back seat. And again, two plus two means two in the front, two in the back. The seat is narrower because the B pillars with the vents built into them are quite narrow. As a result, the full width back seat on a sedan wasn't possible. But again, that was a small price to pay for this slick and sexy fastback body. One thing notable on this Mustang is this white stripe down here at the rocker and the word GT. Now we gotta remember the Ford Mustang GT was available in 1965 and it meant the sportiest version of a non-Shelby Mustang. And part of the package, of course, was that horizontal stripe, which paid tribute to the Ford GT40 Le Mans race cars. It trickled right on down to Main Street USA. And of course, another detail on the GT would be the quad tip outlet part of the 390 package as well. And of course, the GT on the gas cap. How cool is that too? You push down on the tab or pull up on it and the gas cap opens up. You fill your fuel through the back right here, nice and crisp, brand new parts. But what a cool thing like you see right there. Another detail on the GT would be these chrome styled steel wheels, which kind of look like mags or Kregers, but they are steel. These are made by Kelsey Hayes and they're chrome plated with some argent in the middle, kind of gives it the look of an exotic magnesium wheel, trim ring made of stainless, mass production, but it looks like exotic California aftermarket speed equipment right from your Ford dealer. So that's a story of how 1967 saw the Mustang grow from strength to strength. It got wider under the hood to allow the accommodation of that 390 big block. And remember, you're going to hear this motor run in just a second. Stick around. It's worth it. Now, to, work, to learn more about this particular Mustang, you can check it out on the High Octane Classics website.